Welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education meeting for February 22nd, 2016. Can I have a motion to go into executive session for the matters pertaining to the employment history of particular individuals? So, so moved. Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I have a motion to go back into public session? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Good evening. Welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education meeting for February 22nd, 2016. Can we please stand for a moment of silence? Uh, a Pledge of Allegiance followed by a moment of silence. For our armed forces, those in our Yorktown School District who have lost loved ones, especially the father of Secretary Lisa Kamea, the father, ter father of uh, Central Office Receptionist Noreen Boyle, and former student Mark Vincy. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. start with public comment anybody wishing to speak no all right we're going to go right into budget guys it's that time of year Ralph so good evening everybody and thank you for being here um, this evening we actually have two portions of the budget that we're going to present as the board would recall uh, Tom did a budget overview probably about two weeks ago and at this juncture he's going to do the athletic and co-curricular budget followed by debt service transportation general support and tax cap calculation so Tom Which one are you starting Thanks, Rob. With? I'm going to start with uh, athletics and co-curricular. Okay, great. If that's okay with everybody. Beautiful. Oh, you're good. You good to go with that? How would you get those off the desk? Yeah. Dennis, you all good to go? Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tonight's presentation of the athletics and co-curricular budgets is the second in a series of six budget informational sessions. This process will culminate on March 28th with the presentation of the superintendent's proposed budget to the Board of Education. There will be two more sessions uh, in addition to this series of six, the budget adoption and budget hearing, a total of eight sessions altogether where the public can weigh in on the proposed budget before the budget vote in May. As is always the case, our budget is constructed with the whole child at the center of our attention. This chart is the leading graphic in every presentation we make in the budget series you'll be able to identify how each particular section of the budget impacts the wheel that makes up the education of the whole child. In 2016, the Yorktown Central School District has been recognized as a school district of character. This award comes on the heels of the Mildred Strang Middle School being recognized as a New York State School of Character and a National School of Character. The Yorktown Central School District will be considered for the national award in the near future. So let's begin with the athletics budget. The director of athletics is responsible for 70 employees under his umbrella of responsibility. The director also has supervisory responsibility over the physical education teachers throughout the district K through 12. They are not included on this particular organizational chart. The 2015-16 number of coaches is reflective of the fact that two teams, boys swim and dive team and the gymnastics team did not run this year due to low participation numbers. For the purposes of establishing the budget for next year, we are assuming that all teams currently available will run. Here are the projections for the participation in 2016 and 17. The number of teams and coaches does not change from the current year. Again, we're projecting that all 65 teams will run and that all 67 coaches will be necessary. The student participation numbers are a function of the current gross enrollment numbers by season adjusted for a very slight decline in enrollment overall in the high school. All of the budget figures that follow are based on these same assumptions. 
Of course, when we look at the number of students, it's important to know that students play multiple sports and these are not 1,125 unique individuals. We like to present the cost uh, for each season primarily to demonstrate the relative equity of budget allocation. Increases projected for next year are related to slight increases in transportation costs and the cost of game management. Game, game management refers to the cost of timekeepers and other game related functions, supervision, and one required security presence at various events. Here's a breakdown of each sport by season. It ties in directly to the preceding chart. Note that not every sport has three levels, freshman, junior varsity, and varsity. In fact, most sports are limited to just the two levels of junior varsity and varsity. Several years ago, the Board of Education made the determination to eliminate the modified sports level of the athletic programs, and the number of games for, uh, for remaining teams were cut back. That was a reaction to the 2008 economic crisis and the resulting cut in state aid to school districts. And Section 1, the governing body for our sports teams guidance on saving costs in that environment. Here is a summary snapshot of the current year fall sports season. The last column represents the cost of transportation, which after coaching salaries is the largest element of cost in the athletics budget. Here's that same chart for the actual results of our winter sports season. The two teams that are not running this year because of lack of student participation are noted. These are the same two teams I spoke about in the previous chart. The current year spring season numbers are obviously projections. Please take note of the girls golf team that was added last year. The participation numbers are already at the level of the boys team, which has been in existence for many years. This chart is a summary of some of the scholar athlete awards for individuals and teams and the Individual Athlete Recognition Awards. We are extremely proud that 358 of our students and 24 of our teams have been recognized for scholar status. 62 of our class of 2015 athletes received the Superintendent's Award for maintaining a minimum GPA of 3.5. The total increase to the athletic budget projected for 2015 and 16 is $34,000, just over $34,000 or 2.9%. You will note that coaches' salaries have not increased budget to budget, even though the most recent collective bargaining agreement increases coaches' salaries. This is due primarily to the retirement of some senior level coaches that will be replaced by lower paid new coaches. That dynamic offsets the total expected increase in this area. Supervision increases by $17,500 to provide additional coverage at athletic events. $10,500 of that increase will enable us to pay seasonal assistance to the athletic director to aid in the administrative duties of the director's office. Next, we talk about co-curricular activities in the high school and the middle school. Here's a summary of the various clubs offered to students in the high school. In total, more than 1,400 students participate in these clubs. Students can and often do participate in more than one club so the number of 1,400 does not represent unique students, just the total participation. Clubs that are newly offered are indicated on the chart. When new clubs are proposed, they are run without compensation to the teacher advisor for the first year. Here's the same chart for the middle school. Total participation in grades six through eight is roughly 815 students. New clubs, again, are labeled here. However, new clubs are not piloted here as in the high school. The supervisory dollars paid to teachers are reassigned each year due to the clubs that are active. Here's just a brief summary of the clubs that are not running in the current year. We'd like to show you which clubs are no longer running at all or in any one year that are idle. The total budget for co-curricular activities increases by $745 or just over 0%. The advisory salaries paid for the elementary school musical production are no longer assigned. There is a slight increase to the total salaries paid to teachers for serving as advisors to the clubs, a function of the recent collective bargaining agreement. Now, uh, we'll be more than happy to take your questions unless you'd like to go through the second presentation before uh, and, and take uh, questions in total, or we can break at this point to take questions about this specific presentation. Want to go through the next part and then do a one? We'll do the questions, might be easier. Do them now?
Okay, we'll take these questions now. Okay. So, do we want to bring? We do have um, uh, Mr. Nardone Joe. is available. Scott hey, Shilin is here, Scott. and uh, Danielle Sciano to talk about cultural tours, and Joe DiGennaro is here as well. You want to do athletic first and then do co-curricular? Sure. Okay. Theo gets to be on the hot seat first. Hi, Theo. Oh, how are you? <laughs> how are you? <laughs> um, See, this is a little hot. <laughs> it's Anthony's seat. <laughs> Isn't it better than the other chairs? It is much better. Great custodians in this building. Um, anybody have questions they want to start with? Cheryl, did you have any questions? Uh, no, I'm good. Huh? I guess I just want to make sure. I'm um, clear. So the overall athletic budget is 630, well, 632 for this current year and 639 for next year. Is that what I Hold on one second. Let me get, I'll have to get back there. Uh, you have this cost per season breakout. Uh, there's no slide numbers here. but the, the total athletics budget is, if you go to the, the last slide, is oh. just over $1.2 million. Okay. Um, that's, that includes all of the elements of ah, athletics, uniform reconditioning, materials and supplies and things of that nature, Cler the clerical salary, the salary of the trainer and so forth. Okay. So I guess really, you know, overall, it's a relatively small part of our overall budget, so it seems like a, a good leverage, you know, for our, our budget dollar, but is, do we ever account for the money that's paid by student families outside of this? Like, do we have any idea? how much that is and is it done in a sort of a balanced way across the different sports? There, there are a couple of things. That's one element that I'm sure Mr. Nardone can get into in detail when we talk about the um, ice hockey team and the ski team in particular, uh, wrestling, they all participate in terms of cost. The other element is that the, the gate receipts earned from these sporting events go back into revenue to offset the cost of this and that approaches $30,000 a year. So, uh, but Mr. Nardone, you want to talk about Yeah, that? that's, that's correct. Um, we do have our gate receipts from many of our, our sports, particularly football in the fall, our wrestling tournament, our volleyball tournament. And those numbers vary between twenty and $30,000, and it goes right into the uh, general account. So there is, I don't know if it offsets it or not. And then, of course, you have the skiing. Um, parents uh, contribute to their lift tickets as well as uh, the ice hockey. So all that money does go back in uh, to our general budget. But are there other, sp I guess I get skiing and ice hockey, they're just such significant costs associated with those sports. Are there other sports that are not fully funded by the high school where the, the families are expected to, to contribute? No. Okay. No. Good. Thanks. Hi, Fia. Um, question. We, um, discussed or, or put into the budget the assistant to the athletic director seasonal position. Can you just explain to us a little bit about the value of that and how you see that um, working? I think, I think over the course of the year, I think that position will be very beneficial for me in a couple of ways. One way in particular is the collection and distribution of uniforms is, is kind of a tedious um, job. It's a job that just doesn't happen in one day. It takes many, many weeks when it's all said and done to get all the uniforms in, accountability, then ultimately making the kids responsible if they don't uh, return uh, the uniform. So uh, that's one, would, would be one big help. And quite frankly, I think on weekends, uh, Saturday and Sundays, a lot of our games now are being played as they have been in the past on weekends. And I think uh, giving that person some of the responsibilities to be on campus or attend some of the activities would certainly relieve uh, some of my schedule. There's also, a, frankly, there's a, a cost savings too with regard to seasonal assistance. Um, Mr. Nardone also often works outside, days outside of the contract which, for which he's compensated. So on, uh, on those days that a seasonal assistant works, we, don't, we wouldn't have that compensatory. Uh, element to pay as well. That's an interesting concept. You're going to work less and get paid less. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to work less. <laughs> I, don't think. I, I wouldn't agree with that at all. Uh, really, in analyzing this over many, many years, um, I, I don't see the benefit. Fio attends everything, whether we expect that he's going to be there or don't expect that he's going to be there, and I think that will continue. I think the, the, the benefit of this is really more from the purpose of having an extra set of eyes and hands 
uh, for, for a season where you have in front of you the number of athletic teams that are, are operating um, in a particular season. Uh, they're, they're not um, a nominal number, they're a significant number. So I would think that in, in the past where, where I felt badly, to be honest with you, is when that wasn't provided where people didn't come forward and, uh, and um, support a particular season and that was left to Mr. Nardone to do without any compensation or any thought that he should be compensated beyond it. And I, and I would see it really as not um, a trade-off. I would see it as an addition because those are the days that he works, frankly, are all vacation days that he comes in and weekends. I've never really seen that any place else but here. So I, I would disagree that there'd be any savings. That, that's just in, not accurate. Don't, don't ruin it, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was viewing it as a positive. Yeah. Because oftentimes that's as a board the, of education. I don't, well, I don't want to yeah. be duplicitous. Yeah. Uh, that would be, an, that that would be in addition to his, yeah. um, his reimbursement for a well-deserved. I, I, I don't see it as supplemental. I see it as uh, it's separate, distinct, and, and different. I would fully expect that he would be paid and the person would be paid to assist. And have we worked out how that's going to be structured yet? Um, no, not entirely. Who the person is. By the way, they, the intention of that comment was not to job. suggest that he wouldn't be wouldn't be paid for time he was here. That I wasn't just to that. I, I think it would be. I think it would be one of the uh, uh, process through HR where they would send out um, anyone interested in the district, quite frankly, who might be interested in applying for the position. Um, it, it's probably not as inviting. It's probably it's probably not as inviting as it may look, uh, because you're going to have to put in some time and on weekends and late nights. So hopefully uh, we'll find uh, the right person or two that would be interested in doing that. Have you okay. thought of using um, a student as an intern to aid that person? Because a lot of kids, you know, that's the big thing. They don't want to go into sports management. Well, why don't you let them intern and help the poor, uh, you know, associate, you know, ad assistant uh, start collecting some of those uniforms mm -hmm. from their friends? That's a, that's a good idea. I think we can uh, entertain that. Yep. Yeah. Jackie, you are a valuable so, part of this Every team. once in a while. <laughs> every time. Um, hi, Fia. Hello, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Um, each time this year, it seems like we go back and we look at trends and what other schools are doing. Um, I just want to confirm that we are still not interested in modified sports, where, what the status is of other schools. Um, I know we have a lot of activities for our kids, but you know we talk about trends in freshmen, uh, you know freshman sports. So, do you have any updates for us? Are we still moving in sure, the no, same direction? Sure, that's a great question because I do have some thoughts on that. Um, first time this year where boys swimming, uh, we didn't have uh, enough boys to uh, field a team. We had about seven or eight, and after meeting with them, they thought it'd be better for them to swim on their own on the outside club. Uh, but we all thought and hoped that next year we'll have enough to um, bring the team back. And the same thing this year with our freshman girls uh, basketball. We didn't have enough uh, girls for that team. So there is a little bit of a trend here. Last year was softball, mm -hmm. uh, freshman softball. And quite frankly, our ice hockey team, who just completed their season uh, last night, they lost four to two in, in a well-played game. Uh, I've met with the parents, with the coach, and it looks like next year our numbers are not going to be adequate to have a team um, as a Yorktown team. So the thought has to be now for me to consider, you to consider, uh, the thought of maybe merging with another school. Now, I've always had my own personal thoughts about merging. It's not something that I'm always excited about because I feel Yorktown High School, it's our community, it's our high school. Uh, if we can't feel the team, then maybe we need to go back to the drawing board, our youth sports, and then wait a year or two, and then hopefully we'll be back on track. That's my own personal thought. The other side of the coin says that the returning kids, in particular ice hockey next year, there'll be about a half a dozen uh, should they not still have the opportunity to play their high school season, and that would mean merging with another uh, school. Merging has its advantages. It allows you to have two schools compete where normally they would not be able to. Some of the disadvantages could be you know, who the coach is gonna be from our school, their school, their policies, our policies, cost, 
So there are some things that clearly are underway in section one. There's a lot of merged. Don't, I don't want to imply that there's not. There are many merged schools, teams in place now. It's just something that would be new for us. So it's something that I'm going to have to look um, for as the, as the year uh, progresses. I'm scheduled to meet with the ice hockey parents on Thursday. I'll get some more uh, um, feedback from them. But I think it's going to be a decision that we're going to have to consider uh, possibly merging so those returning players will have the opportunity to compete. Do you think part of it is a, um, our declining enrollment? There's less kids, so there's less. You, you can't field as many teams as you once were able to if you don't have as you know, a large community as we used yes, to have. Yes, well, as in most schools, there is declining enrollment, clearly. Um, I just personally, I think it's uh, there's so many things that kids have the opportunity to do today. They're, they're stretched. They're doing multiple things. It's not just athletics anymore. You know, it's the social scene. It's music. It's mm -hmm. dance. It's many things that are taking up their time, and they're finding it very difficult to manage two or three things during the same season. So I think that's why... Um, the message is if you're not going to commit to a team, then it's probably not worth your coming out for the team, and therefore they don't come out as much as they have. Can, Theo, are there, are there um, districts in the area that don't field a hockey team right now, a number of them? There are some schools that already have contacted me that are in the same situation, Somers being one uh, for sure. They're merged with North Salem right now already, and their numbers are still going down with two schools. So they may be interested, and, there are, and I'm sure the parents are going to come back with a couple other schools that they know better than I at this point what their next season is going to look like, because I'm not privy to that at this point. I'll get that information from our coach as well as our parents. Christine? You know, looking at uh, page 55 here, the uh, supervision of salaries, is it, are these for the seasonal assistants uh, the season? Is that what that is? The, uh, <laughs> he doesn't have the breakdown, Christine. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> which, which one are you looking at? I'm looking at page 55, the budget line that's uh, salaries and supervision for seasonal sports, football, and soccer. And right. That would, in, that would include our, our personnel for um, uh, teachers who are being paid supervisory rates. Um, game and, management, pretty much. Right. And Police everything security. that encompasses game management, including perhaps some security as well. question um, on uniforms because I know that we you cycle through them but I noticed this year reconditioning of uniform line is zero and buying new uniforms is down so is that uh, how does that work if we're trying to cycle through them so we're never at a point where we're buying way too many yeah the recycling pretty much pretty much stays stagnant I think that's just our relationship that I have with the vendor who I've had for my whole time here mm -hmm. uh, he rarely uh, increases our costs I mean if you go back you can look at that number it's pretty steady every year mm -hmm. um, the uniform piece is a combination of styles change unfortunately for our budget they change often and therefore over the course of a couple years um, the uniform um, a combination of they come outdated we don't get them all back, and therefore we have to, um, you know, buy new budget, ones. But your budget number's down, not up. That's why I'm questioning. I'm sorry? Your budget number's down. Yeah, well, we're in, pretty good, we're in pretty good shape. Oh, okay. We are in pretty good shape with uniforms. I will say that um, I think everyone's at the top of the line right now, and most recently. So we're in a very good place right now with uniforms. Awesome. Okay. All right. Any other questions? How's our teams doing this year for you? We're doing good. <laughs> well, uh, we have uh, we have a skier up at Whiteface Mountain today, nice. uh, competing, and we have a bowler going next week to the states. And our team sports have all completed. Most recently, yesterday, track and ice hockey. Our basketball team—they all had above 500 um, seasons, so they were very successful. Unfortunately, they didn't advance in the in the playoffs, but very successful as far as the regular season is concerned. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Thanks for you. Thanks. Um, so we're going to do co-curricular? Who, who are we bringing up for co-curricular? Well, we have um, Mr. Shiland, um, Ms. Shiano, uh, Ms. Horowitz, uh, and Mr. DiGennaro is here as well. Should they fit? Yeah, we can squeeze down. Christine's good. Huh? 
Oh, hi, Scott. <laughs> we so won't we, bite. So we just need a chair for you, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Here, I can, I can use this one. Christine, you can use this chair right here. Okay. Yeah. Scott, you want to sit in this chair and Joe will sit in that chair? Yeah. There you go. Now you could now you're the same height as the rest of us. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said take that chair. That's great. How are you both? And I know that we have a process. No, that's all right. But we also have a process of, of regularly reviewing them. So, you know, that's really just a statement for the public so that we know that uh, which ones are effective. Um, there's a certain amount of uh, money that's allocated for the clubs. And then you guys have been really very doing a great job of, of staying within that budget. So I don't have any questions. Um, it's, it's nice to see this and to see. Uh, programs that we support and how they're participated, you know, that, that everybody is utilizing them. Well, for the most part. Christine? I just would like for maybe uh, Mr. DeGenera, if you can just give, uh, you know, some type of a brief little overview as to what changes may have taken place this year that were not, um, uh, you know, common or in place last year, what types of club or extracurricular activities for the public that may not be aware of the process year to year. Sure, thank you. Um, we look at them annually and we really look for how highly subscribed they are and the sustainability of the clubs that we offer. So each year we send out a memo to our faculty and staff to make sure that we have one advisors. Um, most of the clubs, the more popular ones, they run every year. There hasn't been too many changes. For the ones that you have in your packet that have changed a little bit year to year, it's really on student interest. Um, we'll look at what um, where the student interest is when kids come into the high school one of the first things we talk with the ninth graders as they transition in is take a look get involved and if you see something that we don't have that you like we want you to feel connected so don't be afraid to come forward and, and really uh, take the initiative um, any of our new clubs when we look at the numbers we look at the sustainability we certainly want to make sure that we have a club that uh, tom used the word before piloting we pilot for a year to make sure it comes back a second year typically we won't have seniors start a club because they'll leave us. If they do, they have to have the leadership to go recruit the younger kids to make sure that we have it in year two, uh, year three. So we do look at it. We make sure that we, um, we service the most kids that we possibly can within the budget that we have, and that's our goal every year. Thank you, thanks. Um, Scott, could you explain the, the uh, thought process between, between when you let go of a club and when you bring on new ones, because it looks like you let go of a lot of computer clubs and stuff, you know. The, uh, similar to Mr. DeGenero, the, the process is when we send a memo out to the teachers and then they resubmit to us an activity that they would like to um, sponsor. The activities that didn't run this year were the activities that didn't come back to us. So, for example, the, the actor's workshop, um, there wasn't an interest by that advisor from last year to rerun that activity this year. So it's based upon the advisors, not necessarily the student participation? Absolutely, because we have to have a, an adult supervisor to facilitate the activity. And if that person is not interested or possibly like with the actor's workshop, Mr. Um, Dorito did that activity last year now he's doing the, the musical and he just felt that taking on both of those activities this year would be too much for him okay I just it's it's a different yours is, is based upon student participation yours is based upon staff participation it's kind of an interesting I, I think it, academy. it kind of works both yeah. ways I think it would be you could have the student interest and have a lack of adult supervision mm -hmm. and moderate you know somebody who wouldn't uh, necessarily want to moderate that so I think it can work both ways you could have student interest and no moderator yeah, yeah. or you could have um, you know a moderator and no yeah. student interest and the only other question I have in this for both of you what is your cutoff number 
that a club isn't doesn't have enough participation and is it participation from September 1 when they sign up for everything or is it based upon when you start looking at it in January and February and only you know one third of those kids are showing up yeah I, I really can't put a number on it I can give you a couple examples a yearbook staff which I would love to have a hundred students involved on the yearbook <laughs> club um, but there's just not so sometimes it's six kids who just really do it with the two advisors where other clubs are very um, you know you have a lot more so I think it's really specific to the needs of the building um, and the interest of the kids um, I could give you one example where we were in a similar situation as Mr. Shiland in the middle school our frisbee club we have a lot of kids who love frisbee and they run their own um, you know their own leagues outside of the building and they wanted to bring it into the school and every year we try to get somebody to advise that in the building and it's been we've been unsuccessful we just can't seem to find anybody who wants that challenge <laughs> um, but, so to answer your bigger question I don't have a set number it's really a program by program decision okay. right. one of the things we are going to put into place for next year is um, what we've agreed to uh, with Joe is that um, the students will have up to the first five weeks of school to introduce a new mm -hmm. club. If it goes beyond the fifth week, then it would have to wait till the next year. Because presently we have just too many things coming up during the course of the year. It's very hard to keep track and very hard to control. And it's becoming too enormous. So if you have a five week period, by then they're adjusted to the high school. They have a sense that they can put in a proposal, but once we get to mid-October, whenever that fifth week is, then that's it until the following year. Fair enough. I think so. Um, Joe, I, I was just looking. I noticed that um, one of the highest subscribed clubs is the Big Buddy program. And I know that has to do with the incoming freshmen, right, with uh, partnering up with the Big Buddy. Can you maybe address that a little bit as to how how it's working and has it evolved over the years? Is it still something you know that's functioning well? Just talk a little bit about that program sure. since there seems to be a lot of people involved in it. For people maybe who are not familiar with it at home, it's a, it's a transition to high school program for incoming ninth graders. And the process really starts in eighth grade. We work real well with the middle school staff um, and make sure that we connect with those students. We bring them over early. Um, each eighth grader, when they come over as a ninth grader, they'll have a big buddy. Um, they'll, the, but the connection will start before we open school in September. It starts over the summer, really in the spring with a meeting in general, and then a specific letter over the summer that they, they receive from their big buddy. First day of school, we have a ninth grade transition to school day. We have classes only, a modified schedule for ninth graders. The 10th through 12th graders do not come in that day. They meet all their teachers, they go to their lockers, we have a kickoff barbecue, but they spend time with their big buddy that day. So by the time everybody comes that first full day of classes, um, ninth graders are feeling pretty comfortable at that point. Um, I think the process for selection of that is, is very simple. It's very formal, but it's simple. Students apply, so current 11th graders are going through that process right now for next, as next year's senior class. They'll apply, there's a selection process, they go to a committee, and really the goal of the committee is to find a very broad-based group of, of uh, big buddies um, because we have a broad-based group of students coming in and they try to match them up with somebody that will not only stay with them in the transition to high school, stay with them through the entire year. Um, and, and so there is, you know, follow-up with them, uh, constant communication. Um, and it, I, in my opinion, it works real well. I think it's a great way for them to kick off school, to have a familiar face as an older student there and to make those connections even before they start their classes. Okay. Anything else, anybody? Nope. We're all good? That was easy, guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dennis, we're having some feedback that it's whistling and it's kind of, I'm sorry, it's just kind of weird in your ears. We are. Uh, we're going to move on to the third presentation in the budget series, which is uh, debt service, uh, the transportation section, the entire general support section of the budget, and we're going to review the tax cap calculation, which has to be filed uh, with the Comptroller's Office by the end of the week, uh, which will require your approval. Uh, as a, again, as is always the case, our budget is constructed with the whole child at the center of our attention. Um, 
I again will remind everybody that the Yorktown Central School District has been recognized as a school district of character. This award comes on the heels of Mildred Strang being named a New York State and National School of Character. Uh, the Yorktown Central School District will be considered for the National Character Award in the near future. Uh, we're going to start with debt service. So the, the debt service section of the budget represents the cost of borrowing money to complete capital projects. Each capital project is approved by voters before it's undertaken. The voters authorization allows the district to borrow the money in the open market via a bidding process. The district's AA credit rating from Standard & Poor's along with the stable and well-funded cash reserves allow for low-cost borrowing opportunities. On average, each element of debt is repaid over a 15-year period, so the ability to borrow money at low interest rates saves taxpayers thousands of dollars over the repayment period. Note that a large portion of the 2001 capital projects is due to mature in two years. The highlighted items are referencing our most, re uh, most recent refinancing of, of existing debt. The final payment under the original structure will be made in June. The refinanced balance will mature in seven years. We refinance debt only when the difference in the interest rates is sufficient to demonstrate a resulting significant savings to taxpayers. This chart reflects the total cost of the debt summary as we discussed. Year over year, debt service declines by just under $40,000. It's also a reflection of the fact that we have completely borrowed all of the money for the current capital projects and are not taking on any new debt. We're going to move along to transportation. Uh, the Yorktown Central School District employs a four-tier bus system. That is to say that we have four distinct cycles to our daily runs. In the mornings, the high school students are transported first, then the middle school students, Crompon School, and last, the K-3 to schools, Brookside and Mohansic. In the afternoons for dismissal, the same cycle takes place. The four-tier cycle takes just over three hours to complete. We utilize 74 buses of varying sizes. The district provides home-to-school transportation for Yorktown students attending our public school private schools within the mileage requirements established by the State Education Department, and students attending special education programs outside of our district boundaries. Our buses tra travel more than a half a million miles each year, consuming more than 50,000 gallons of fuel. The total cost of the entire transportation operation increases by one half of one percent, or just over $30,000. The cost of diesel fuel is expected to decline based on the recent trend in oil prices, the cost of our transportation contract with Bauman and Sons will increase by no more than 2% based on the most recent contract extension. On to general support. We'll talk about the general support section of the budget. General support is made up of 16 distinct areas of the budget. They are all listed in the left-hand column of this chart. The organizational chart represents every area of the general support section. There are a few more items represented in the chart that belong in the instruction section, but it is nonetheless inclusive of everything we will discuss here. We'll get right into the budget changes for each element. The Board of Education section includes the Office of the District Clerk as well as the cost of the annual budget vote and elections. As you can see, there's only a slight, there's a slight decrease in the total. The Central Administration and Finance sections of the budget include the equivalent of 8.5 employees. The total increase between the two areas is less than 1%. Two more areas of finance that capture the cost of auditing, both internal and external, both of which are unfunded mandates, by the way, the cost of the treasurer's office and legal counsel services. Human resources costs increased by approximately $12,000. The cost of advertising declines because new software purchases included postings on job websites. BOCES recruiting costs decline because a private firm now does the fingerprinting and background checks of prospective employees. That cost will now be borne by the applicants. The new ASOP system cost declines because the prior year included a one-time setup cost for the initial year of use. The recruiting cost increases reflect the addition of the new Applitrex software that will streamline the recruitment process and reduce screening time. The first year cost includes a $1,000 setup fee. Special items decrease largely due to the elimination of the BOCES capital projects costs. 
The Yorktown Central School District paid just over $1.2 million over a three-year period to pay for our share of the capital improvements to the BOCES facilities. By paying for the projects with cash reserves, taxpayers were spared the interest costs of borrowing the money and repaying the debt over a 15-year period. And we'll move along to facilities. Just a brief summary of, the school summary of the school buildings under this umbrella. French Hill School is still idle, but being leased out to 12 individual tenants. The school district's wrestling program is located in that building, and we retain a series of rooms for storage purposes. In total, we garner more than $260,000 in gross revenue from the French Hill building. After expenses for maintenance and utilities, the building produces a positive cash flow of more than $25,000. Here's a brief look at the structure of the facilities group. The director reports to the assistant superintendent for business and is a member of the central administrative cabinet. The current staffing levels of the facilities department remain the same year over year. Just as a point of information, we have two fewer employees than when French Hill was idled in 2010. The total operations of plant budget is home to custodial salaries and utility expenses. As you would expect, fuel oil costs are expected to be lower next year compared to 2016. It's important to note that the custodial unit collective bargaining agreement is currently under negotiation. The total cost of this section increases by just over one half of 1%. The maintenance of plant section represents most of the upkeep codes for buildings, grounds, plumbing, and so forth. In total, this section declines by just over $5,000. In total, the general support section of the budget, all 16 components, will decline by 2.3%, or $216,000. Just a note of efficiency, the first four sections noted on this chart include the Board of Education, Central uh, Administration, Finance, and Personnel. In this group, the Yorktown Central School District has the 45th lowest cost as a percentage of general fund expenditures out of 54 school districts in our area. Operations and maintenance, based on the same standard, is the 44th lowest cost as a percentage of general fund expenditures, again, out of 54 school districts in our area. Now it's time to discuss the tax cap calculation. As members of the board know, we are required to file our cap calculation with the Comptroller's Office on or before the 1st of March each year. Now that all the variables are known, we can present that calculation to you for your review and approval. This year, the allowable increase factor for school districts across the state is 0.12%. The allowable increase factor is the lesser of 2% or the rate of inflation. This year, that rate of inflation for school districts is calculated at the aforementioned 0.12%. After pumping our known factors through this state constructed formula, we determined that our allowable tax levy growth is three tenths of 1%. For us, that's equivalent to just over $248,000. So here's the math behind the calculation. You can see that our allowable levy growth is 0.32%. It's important to know that based on our current budget construction, we will need to use fund balance more than, uh, more than likely in excess of three quarters of a million dollars to comply with this tax ta cap target. We are not asking you to consider asking voters to exceed the cap, a decision that would require a 60% majority. So the two questions the board uh, needs to answer for us this evening is, are you in agreement that we can file this cap calculation with the Comptroller's Office? And two, are you in agreement that we will not seek to exceed the cap limits? And that's those are uh, that's the presentation in its entirety. All right. So, do you want to start at the beginning? You want to do tax cap first? What do you want, guys? Want to yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So, does anybody have any questions about the calculation? Just just more clarification. So, what this says is, when you take into account the cost of inflation, which is the lower of two percent of the cost of inflation, then you add back a few things based on our unique circumstances. The most we can raise our taxes is 0.32%. That's, that's the correct. That's our, that's our calculation for our cap. Correct. And do we have a current uh, estimate of what we're recommending in this budget yet, or we're just not there yet? Well, we're recommending that um, based on the budget that we have constructed, 
we're recommending that we go up to the maximum allowable by law, which is the total 0.32 percent. And that the difference in our costs are going to come from our fund balance. Yes. That's we'll, how we're going to fund it. The balance will be funded through fund balance. Right. As we sit here today, we'll, we'll need to take $805,000 from our savings account to comply with the cap. Mm -hmm. The alternative would be to have to remove $805,000 from a cost from the budget. We're allowed to raise our budget by less than $250,000, basically. That's on $97 million. Exactly. But yeah. also, when you add in the contractual things that we're already obligated with, I mean, yeah. just, you know. It's a joke. It, <coughs> salaries, yes, pension, our, oil, our salaries fuel, are we're done, you know. Our total yeah. salaries, as you might imagine, in a service organization are near $50 million. So every 1% increase in salaries is worth half a million dollars, which is twice the allowable limit we have available to us. So how long are we going to be able to stay ahead of this, Tom? There hasn't been a year yet, and correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, but our, there hasn't been a year yet where we haven't had to use our cash reserves to mm. comply with the tax cut. The one saving grace we have this year is that the TRS came in lower than mm -hmm. anticipated, so it didn't kill us 100%, because otherwise we'd be taking more money out of fund balance. Yes. Yeah, we, we've always taken over the years. Tom is quite right. It's uh, probably over the last six years that we've borrowed against our savings, probably more to the tune of between 1.2 and 1.6 million. So the good news here is with the reduced uh, pension costs and with a slight increase from the state, we only had to go to 800,000, uh, but we're still borrowing 800,000. And Tom, that 800,000 is out of a fund balance of how much? Like what percentage are, are we using roughly? Well, we, right now, um, without projecting where we'd be at the end of the year. We have about $12 million in total cash reserves. So I would recommend that we're using, and we had done this through the Financial Advisory Committee, that we would use the established pension um, system cost reserve uh, to churn that because the auditors want us to use that money, which we are doing on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that will help us to comply with the tax cap by doing that. So we're, but we're using less than 10% of our overall cash reserves, like mm -hmm. 6 or 7%. Oh, yeah. So we, we make the recommendation very comfortably, yes. Just out of curiosity, what was the money we lost from gap elimination this year? Uh, gap elimination over, since its inception, has cost us uh, nearly $12 million. Yeah, uh, this year, do you, remember, do you know? Offhand? This year it's going to cost us, it's on the key elements page that of what I provided you. And uh, this year, gap elimination is worth $758,000. Yeah, there's our savings, mm -hmm. <laughs> just so we know. Tom, we're basing this on Vice what budget-to-budget budget increase percent? Yes. The budget-to-budget budget increase this year, um, we're looking at one-tenth of one percent, or $105,000. You know, I think that it's basically flat. It, you guys need to really be um, praised for, like I always joke that being on the board now, this is our 10th year, <laughs> some of us. Um, I know that uh, a lot of us came on, but we never had the fat years, you know, where it was just like, it seemed like all this money that kept going. And uh, you guys did an amazing job. It's right from the get-go. You went out and you started to look at efficiencies. And I think that that, because people, if they look back historically, we've brought that um, interest rate down and down and down each year. Um, and, and I think it doesn't hurt as much because you started, that's the way that you started setting it up from the beginning. So thank you for that, you know? Thank you. Although it would be fun to have a 10% increase, just saying. Yeah, not good to pay it on I didn't say about paying it. I'm just saying to budget it, plan yeah, it. Spend it. Spend it, yeah. I don't want to spend so, it. Does anybody have any other questions about tax health calculation? Or is everybody comfortable staying under the tax cap or at the tax cap? We're not going to exceed. Is that correct? Yes. Census? Yes. And is everybody comfortable letting Tom file this with the state? Yes. yes. Thank you. You got it. Thank Tom. you, Tom. Thank you. All right. Where are we going now, Tom? Uh, anywhere you want to go with this presentation, if you have any questions, there are 16 different sections in this presentation. So let's start at number I, one. Go ahead, Mike. Can I just ask a clarifying question, Tom? And if sure. It's, I don't mean to call you out, but the operations of plant, is that just a mislabeled column that says 2015-16 budget? 
Because um, all the other ones say 16, 17. On the present, yes, mm -hmm. that, that's a mislabel. Okay, just want to make sure we're looking at the same stuff. I okay. apologize for that. Sorry. So let's start with debt service. Anybody? So just some clarifying questions, Tom. On the first page of debt service, um, about halfway down, the lines start with numbers like 9,330,000 and then a hyphen and then 37.4 in projects. Yeah. Well, how, those, how are those numbers related? Well, what that's what that's telling us, um, what it's uh, I've attempted to do there, is to say that that borrowing that's one piece of borrowing of the 37.4 million dollars worth of projects we're currently doing. So uh, if you look at those, okay. the first borrowing was 9.3 million dollars. We can't borrow money beyond approved projects up at this state. So our first borrowing was worth 9.3 million. The second borrowing was 7.5. The third was 9.3, which included a piece of the Excel projects, and then the final borrowing of the 37 million was just under 6.2 million. I see. They're each individual pieces with in unique maturity. Each part dates. of a total project yeah. spend of 37.4 million. Correct. And then the top three lines are each kind of standalone borrowings related to the, the original capital plan that was approved in 01? Yes. One. The, 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 the previous projects from 2001 totaled just under $32 million. The, the second line item on that chart will go away. That's the, that's the final principal payment that's due on a refinanced piece. The third line is the refinanced piece of a portion of the 2001 projects that qualified for refinancing. That saves us about $20,000 per year in interest payments. You know what's scary when you look at that 2001 project? We're still paying for the athletic fields that we already that we already refurbished. Yeah. yeah, yeah. At a very low interest rate, though. <laughs> <laughs> what is our interest rate on on some of these? I know we we got a very good our, interest. Our borrowings are are less than two percent uh, on average. I would say two percent on average of the current bond, um, but they're very very affordable. But we've also learned from that as we've done these projects moving forward. I mean, I, I know I've heard you say so many times, like, how long are we going to pay that for? And, and oh. because you really, you know, you don't want to finance it over the life of the it's expectancy of it. Not yeah, exactly. It's going to not last you 15 years. Well. <laughs> so, Tom, if I could just summarize here. I just did some rough calculations. We've borrowed about $70 million over the last 15 years, and we still owe about half of that. That's about correct, yes. And there's no intent to look to refi anything else. We're as low as we can go with interest. Yes, that given where we are right now, nothing is going to qualify for refinancing. All right, we're just going to be paying for a long time. Now, the, the other piece of this is we, we are eligible and we do receive state aid, building aid, hmm. uh, just over 50 cents on the dollar for every dollar of debt service we have. So roughly 50% of these costs are offset on the revenue side as far as taxpayers are concerned. And all we have to do is look at our buildings and know how beautiful they are. So that's right. They really look good. They do look good. Um, so everybody's good with debt service. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, transportation. Questions. I have a question. Um, how are we doing with? Uh, um, I'm just trying to think how to how to phrase it. So, uh, some of our uh, um, life skills classes that we have um, in the district, and they go into the community on a regular basis. Um, as those classes start to increase, do we have enough wiggle room with however you work it with our own bus or working it out with the? You know what I mean, right? Yes. The, our current contract very allows. Very poorly said. Let me just say that. That's very, very poorly said. But it's like you're reading my mind, and it's not <laughs> fair to the audience, and I'm sorry. But we have, lo we have kids in, the, in our school districts that go out into the community as part of their program, and we need to provide transportation for yes. them. And sometimes you have negotiated with the bus company for that, and then we talked at, at different times about um, uh, maybe having uh, a bus of our own that we can transport these children with. I know we use uh, paratransit. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we've really taken advantage of that. So I guess that is my uh, uh, trying to be a bit more articulate about are we able to still meet the needs and have, of, of our kids and have we budgeted for that? Without question, it's, it's infrequent that those trips cost us any money. The current contract we have with our transportation provider allows 
a certain number of free in-district trips every month, uh, and they're utilized in that capacity. Okay. And is that why there's a budget decrease on in-district trips? Because in he's providing trips them? In-district trips don't cost us, cost us virtually nothing um, because we're able to, Patty Sauber, who's our coordinator of transportation, is a master at aligning these buses so that they cost us as little as possible. And that's why the in-district field trips cost keep continues to go down. Okay, great, thanks. Anybody else with, anybody? Go ahead. We're on transportation yes. still, right? So. I have to ask, Tom, as, as, as great of a job as you do here on, on the fuel, the diesel fuel line, why is it only going down 9%? We had this conversation in the Financial Advisory Committee, yeah. and the consensus was that even though prices are um, significantly lower than that now, if you, did a, you know, if you did a burn rate on this, it's significantly lower, that uh, 18 months from now when this budget is enacted, it would probably be slightly higher. So we mitigated the decrease, if you will, with the expectation that at some point oil prices might rebound slightly. Okay. So we've hedged our sales a little the bit. The same dynamic is in play in facilities when you look at the oil prices there. Mm -hmm. um, well, you might say, why isn't there a more dramatic decrease? And that's the same reason why. But the, the, the Middle East, they're all looking to, to reduce production now so they can raise the prices. So mm -hmm. it's one way or the other we're going to get. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Anything? Okay. General support. Board of Education section. Anybody? I just want to say that Mark Drexel would have loved this <laughs> chart. Remember how important that was yes. to him and how many times he kept trying and colored things to make us do yeah, it. That, so. This is actually part of that product. Is, is it? That's, <laughs> it so is. thanks, Mark. You're still with us. It is. She put his name on the bottom so we can remember him forever. <laughs> Copyright. Mark exactly. Mark um, I, my only question, and I guess it, it, if it's Tom or Yvette, is we know we're using new voting machines. Are we sure we've captured what the costs of this new voting process is going to be? Yes, we, we believe we have. As, uh, Yvette and I sat together and we we're comfortable with it, with the budget as it exists. And we're happy with the bold software and all that stuff? I think so, yeah. I like it very much. Okay. All right. Any questions on this? Anybody? Mm -hmm. okay. I think you, you were trying to reference it, and I couldn't quite grasp it, Tom. What is the increase line item for BOCES recruiting? Oh, ah, or are you human resources section? You moved, you moved you? down. I don't know. Are, you sk are you skipping ahead, Mike? Yeah. Well, you're you on general doing, support. Well, we were doing the first page. There's nothing on the first page. It's I like $2,000. How long are we going to spend on that? <laughs> Well, how about central admin well, and, and I, finance? I, really? I can answer your question if you go want. Go ahead. Just Thank go. you. Um, it's a the big number. Um, Dr. McGinnis, the director of human resources, is purchasing new software that will streamline the application process. It saves money in other areas, not to a direct offset to the $12,000 uh, increase that you'll see there, $1,000 of which is the first year startup cost and training. But it will save uh, manpower hours in the recruiting and uh, hiring process. So the software is purchased through BOCES? Yeah, is, is that, is no. that Sheila, come on up and talk to us. This. Which line are you on? Uh, 6080, BOCES recruiting. All the way at the end. What end? <laughs> the software we're looking at is called AppleTrack. It's part of the frontline software package. We already have their software for My Learning Plan and ASAP. So we'll integrate with that. Um, the BOCI software will still be using OLAS, but we'll be using OLAS to direct it to our website so we can gather more pertinent information to us. Um, for example, when we were hiring for the elementary school teachers last, uh, last summer, we had over 850 applicants. And the OLAS system doesn't let you quickly sort through it and get the qualified candidates. This will allow us to set up the applications for our specifications. So it'll be easier to sift through the applicants. It also will automatically download into the other systems, such as ASOP and um, Envision. So it will help reduce any inputting errors. Finally. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So this just basically sorts them, right? Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, that, that's oh, the reason why that cost. <laughs> that that's the reason why the cost is up. So the BOCES recruiting line item is up because of new software. Yes. Thank you. That's where I got to put it. Can I ask about documents management? Sure. Um, so we're spending, are we spending $30,000 this year to digitize our documents? We're, we haven't come up with the overall plan, but we're, the idea was to continue with the digitization, yeah. We're in a position where we still have some files left in storage here in Yorktown, a facility in Yorktown, um, and we'd like to continue the process. So we are in the process of digitizing. We mm -hmm. have digitized so far? Yes, mm -hmm. we've called records and we have digitized some the some of the older records that were in place and then i guess the reason for the the increase is because we want to do it that much faster next year well we want to do more we didn't budget for the digitization last year we had money from the prior year okay. that we rolled over this is really the first year you're seeing a significant increase in that line item and uh, at some point budget. it it will drop off yes it will it'll okay. drop off to um, our hope is to that at the point that we get uh, fluent enough to know what should be digitized and, uh, and in what form, how to tag it, and then it'll just be an annual maintenance and, and we'll have these records. Uh, some of them we have to keep in physical form yeah. regardless. But. Is this that group? Yes. I forgot where they Suffolk. were. Suffolk. Yeah, no, but they Wait, were, I like that, that group. Yeah, but they were up north, right? Yes, Suffolk. <laughs> so I'm just curious, how, how far back are we going? with the records to digitize? Uh, as far back as we have records, and some of them go back wow. a few decades. Okay. Yeah. Some of them, uh, as I said, Tom, we're not able to, by law, we can't, we have to hold on to forever now. Why is that? Like, what's an it's example? Just, uh, it's just the, um, the retention laws, New York State retention laws. We have to keep it in physical form. Some of them huh. we have to keep in physical okay. form, yeah. Until they crumble and deteriorate. <laughs> exactly. we'll left a lot of laws are not caught up to. Yeah, to the digital age. Um, any other questions, guys? Do you want to go back to the board of deadline? Or are you good? Uh, I'm just waiting on you right now. <laughs> I'm good. Um, yeah, I think we're good. We're up to facilities then, guys? Liability uh -huh. insurance. Why is liability insurance up and risk management up? to that section here. I think we're going to look to lower that. We can. Hang on one second, guys. I have three different files operating, so I apologize. Maybe. No need to brag, to Tom. <laughs> we're just scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The, um, three. the uh, insurance coverage includes the uh, cost for fuel tanks and uh, crime and fraud coverage. We're using the liability, our current liability cost of $282,000 at a 0% increase, storage tanks at a 3% increase, and the crime coverage at a 3% increase. So any of the increase in the total cost is related to anticipated inflation on the coverage of uh, fuel oil tanks and our crime and fraud protection. Why are our fuel oil tanks going up? Is it based upon everybody else's loss because no, we're it's, a safety group? Uh, no, it, it's it's a sub coverage, not necessarily from uh, from nicer, um, but uh, from a sub that they identified at the lowest cost, and they're going up at three percent. Our liability increase is, is going up nothing. The largest portion of this I goes up. Find this one. What page Wait, is that what page on? you are, Jackie? The last page where you had human resources. Oh, we moved on to facilities. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not there yet. <laughs> Come That's on, right. Jackie, That's where we're all looking like, wait, I don't see this. I don't see this. Now we got it. Okay, so, now we can go to facilities. You're happy? Go ahead. You had a question about risk management? Uh, I was just curious why the lines went up, and I was curious if our tanks are buried. No, we have no buried tanks. Uh, they're all above ground. And our liability shouldn't be so high. But uh, okay. Did I say that fast enough? We have no barriers. <laughs> and the risk management is a BOCES cost that's reflective of the uh, the cost of the operation of the um, uh, insurance at, uh, at the BOCES level. Okay. All right. We can go to facilities. <laughs> Do we want to invite Dennis up to visit with us? Sure. Mr. Verboise is here this evening. Well, he did stay around. Hello, so. Mr. Verboise. Let's let him. Hello, Dennis. Dennis. Good evening. Almost sounded like Newman Jack. <laughs> Hello. <clears throat> Questions? 
Just on the uh, the staffing, Dennis, I noticed there there are 13 FTEs listed as facility wide. It just seems like a high number not to be assigned to, to a particular building or school. I mean, is that what's what is that mainly made up? Of? Those are our multi trades: plumber, electrician, HVAC, ah, okay. so they just electrician, and time. five groundsmen. Okay. okay. Anybody else? The equipment line is going up. Are you purchasing something new? Are you refurbishing? What do we do? There are three new pieces in there. Um, we need to replace the gator, the the four wheel vehicle, utility vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, there's a new rack truck in the in the rotation of replacing the uh, district fleet, and um, we're also asking for a new John Deere mower that'll enable us to do a more efficient job and uh, and grass cutting and maintenance there. Getting all that for it? five grand, huh? That's pretty good. For $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> well, we bought, what, two vehicles last yeah. year, we right, did. Tom, that were in that line? We item. have a, a new pickup truck this year, and we're just about to receive our new electric vehicle that should be arriving it's soon. It's in. It's in? Mm -hmm. how's in. That, how are those, that, that, well, how's the new pickup truck working for us? Beautiful. Great. I wish there was more snow to yeah. use it. Um, <laughs> no, see, that so, was no, a good thing that we hedged our bets that way. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> don't Tom, say that. Weren't we getting a dump truck, or am I two years behind? Pickup. The 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 rack truck is what we were. We talked about a dump truck when when we were in the financial advisory committee meeting. Yeah. Uh, Dennis and his assistant Marty indicated that the the rack truck is a more pressing need, um, and that the old rack truck that we currently have can be um, repurposed. repurposed ex exactly for our glycol right. liquid ice melt. We're using a 1987 GMC vehicle right now, so I think we've gotten our wares right, with that right. vehicle. What does the rack truck do? It has that lift gate, so it does a lot of the moving of oh. furniture and desk chairs. Tomorrow we have the um, district-wide uh, band um, at the high school, so we move 150 chairs from Crown Pond and music stands. And so you just got your new truck? <laughs> no, you to try it out? You got your new truck? You no, no, we'll use the rack truck for that. Oh. It has the no, we got gate. the new the electric vehicle. The, oh. the hybrid vehicle did come in, though. I haven't seen it. Is that the second one? That's the second one this year. That's yes. the second vehicle year. purchase. Yes. We have three now. Right. No, the hybrids, this no, will the, be our first. It's the the a second is vehicle is purchase a standard, this year. is a standard vehicle. The two electric vehicles that we had gotten are uh, just local to the campus. Oh. This is an automobile oh, that will, this, yeah, this that will go, replace yeah. the bus to, we have an old bus that we're using to ferry the, uh, the courier uses to deliver mail, and this will replace that. So that should help with our savings on gas and stuff like that, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. What kind of vehicle is that? It's a Ford, oh, gee, it's a hybrid, so yeah. it runs on gas to charge the battery and then it's uses the SUV. battery. What's that? Is it the little SUV? Yes, it is. Yes, it's it a is. Hatch. It's a little four-door hatch. It's very nice. The Escape. Yeah. Okay. It's not I don't think it's the Escape, escape It's not? one of them. No, it's, it's something, it's called something else. I, it's an escape game. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you looking to buy one? I'm just trying to make sure we're... We budgeted for certain things, and I want to make sure that's what we're buying. Not, very not, efficient look, I, you I have to tell you, um, Dennis and Marty did such a wonderful job purchasing that uh, we were able to. We had uh, enough money left over to um, to purchase um, to think about purchasing a new lift. Right. Uh, for one for the middle school and one for the high school because we have such difficulty transporting it that changes light bulbs and things like that. So scissor lift. Um, scissor lift, exactly. Just a, a, a terrific job um, hunting down these costs. Marty really beat up these costs really well and, and <laughs> Dennis uh, always does a wonderful job purchasing Maybe you found that, so. your new purchasing agent. Yeah. Um, and, and how do the two electric vehicles, how are they working out? They're doing beautifully. You know, we, we'd, um, <laughs> they've made it through the winter really well. Uh, they're capable of going through light snow. Uh, they have the heaters inside, and our, our folks are very mobile with it, and it works really well. It, it's exceeded our expectations for them. So I'm very happy. The new one we have has a dump feature on it, and we anticipate in the spring and fall that Dennis's uh, maintenance folks will be using it to, to ferry um, athletic equipment and so forth out to the, uh, to the fields. 
So any of the new equipment you're looking to buy going to be electric or hybrid or anything like that? Well, um, the you mean the, the rack truck and so forth? No, we're not no. looking. No, we can't do that. No. Do, do those batteries get affected by the, um, the cold? Not significantly. Um, there, there's some deterioration, as you might expect, because we're, they're running uh, heaters inside of them to stay warm. But the, as long as the distilled water is changed regularly, it holds a, a charge for a significant period of time. Um, the, uh, we can go 50 miles on a single charge with all the bells and whistles running at the same time. So it's, uh, nice. it's been very, very productive for us. And what are they, what do we average in a day, do you know? Uh, we, we don't even use an eighth of the power source in a particular day wow. in one of the vehicles. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Good choice. So yeah. that means you could run it. You could run it theoretically all week on a single charge. Absolutely. And if you're not using the heater in the warmer weather, that wow. shouldn't be a problem at all. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. That's impressive. Um, Dennis, telephone Fantastic. maintenance, sewer, and, uh, water use are <laughs> down. Is is that just a product of the fact that we're plugging up leaks and stuff and putting more efficient lights I in? I think so. <laughs> Let me just double check that. Cheaper th toilet paper. <laughs> I, I thought we plugged all the water leaks that were sewer going down good. years ago. That would be better. We just keep finding it. <laughs> yeah, the, the sewer and water bills, they come uh, three times a year. Um, so that's more right sizing. And it's been pretty consistent. The town wanting to yeah. raise the water rates? What's that? There's something in the paper about the town looking to raise water rates and holding a hearing. Could we that affect us at all in a significant way? No. We haven't gotten a notice. Yeah. And, and our pool doesn't leak anymore, so that's a good <laughs> thing. <too. laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see the pool upkeep line in here. It's on. Um, yeah, I saw. Oh, there it is. Upkeep of pool. Yeah, right maintenance now. of plant. And We're upkeep down. of plumbing, upkeep of electricity. All of that is because we've done most of the work already. Yeah. All the yeah. upkeep lines going yeah. down. The upkeep or the repair projects. We keep doing construction. You got nothing left to repair, Dennis. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. So, if you look at the vandalism line, is there a certain amount? Then it goes into insurance, and that's why we keep it low. Well, the uh, we don't have an extraordinary amount of vandalism, thank goodness. Um, but our deductibles are a thousand dollars in most cases. Okay. So, something the financial advisory committees looked at as well: the possibility of increasing the deductible to. Uh, attain lower premium rates. Okay. Anybody else? It's hard to ask a lot of questions when you guys did such a good job keeping they it. They really well. did, and, uh, but <laughs> not only that, but also job. with the little bullet notes that Tom put in for to you know we have a lot of the explanations already. As yeah, to I'd love to take credit for that, but Janet Fusco, my assistant, helped me significantly on these presentations. And this looks really nice too, Tom. By the way. I was impressed. It looks like he did there. <laughs> <laughs> he's got three things going over there. Of course he did it. Alright. Anything else? Anybody got any questions overall? No. Anything? Not yet. All right. Good. Good job. Thank you, thank guys. You. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, what do we have to? You know what I know we have smart bond approval. We have Patrice here. Um, we'll the Smart Schools Bond Act. This is for Patrice. Is it just approving this now? Yes. Okay. Guys, you ready? Yeah. Whereas the Board of Education of the Yorktown Central School District has developed a preliminary Smart Schools Investment Plan dated December 21st, 2015. And whereas the preliminary Smart Schools Investment Plan was posted on the district's website for a period of at least 30 days prior to the public hearing on the preliminary Smart Schools Investment Plan, providing the public with an opportunity to submit written comments and whereas a public hearing on the preliminary school investment plan was held on January 25th, 2016 to allow the public for comment involvement. And I'm going to go on. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby approves and adopts the final smart schools investment plan dated February 22nd, 2016 and hereby directs the superintendent of schools to submit the final smart schools investment plan to the New York State Education Department and to take all other necessary actions required by the Smart Schools Bond Act. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Patrice, thank you for your hard work. We appreciate that. And good night, that. Patrice. Yes. And we know Dennis is going to want to run off, so can I move one other thing up? Yes. 
can, um, whereas bids were opened on February 11th, 2016 for the capital improvement projects regarding tennis court renovation and electrical service to the press box at the Yorktown High School, be it resolved upon recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education hereby awards the following contracts to the lowest responsible bidders as recommended by Aris Contracting and KSQ Architects. DeRosa's Sports Construction, Inc. of Mamaroneck for tennis court renovation in the total amount of $205,965 and to Tault Electric Corporation of New Rochelle for electrical service to the press box in the total amount of $138,740. So moved. Second. Discussion. Just everybody knows we're not putting electrical service to the press box. It's running new lines because that's where the box is and it will power the um, scoreboard. The lights, the scoreboards, all that stuff, that um, fixture isn't, the wire isn't uh, strong enough anymore. Okay? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We got it. <laughs> we good, guys? All right, yeah. now, personnel. Back up. Um, be it resolved that the Board of Education authorizes the superintendent of schools to sign and approves the terms of agreement between employee District and employee number 2565, dated February 11, 2016, which shall be incorporated by reference within the minutes of this meeting, and be resolved that the Board of Education authorizes its superintendent of schools to sign and approve the terms of the agreement between the district and employee number 3881, dated February 11, 2016, which shall be incorporated by reference within the minutes of this meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed? bid. Whereas it is the desire of the participating school districts of the Southern Westchester Board of Cooperative Educational Services adopting this resolution to bid jointly on the, those supplies, commodities, and materials with the equipment set forth below, we resolved that the Yorktown Central School District agrees to participate with other school districts of Southern Westchester Board of Educational Services, Westchester County, in adopting the joint bidding of the following. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, Student Assistance Services. Resolved on recommendation of the Board of Education, hereby authorizes the Superintendent of Schools to execute an agreement with Student Assistance Services Corporation for comprehensive educational preven pre prevention and intervention services in the amount of $14,220 for the 15-16 school year at Mildred Strang Middle School. No increase in the budget. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? County voting machines. Be it resolved that the Yorktown Board of Education approve the agreement between the school district and the County of Westchester for use of the electronic voting machines, including the other equipment services and services for the May 17, 2016 annual meeting, and if necessary, the budget revote to be held on June 26th. Yeah. Oh, I know. And be further resolved that the board president is authorized to execute such agreement, a copy of which is incorporated by reference with the minutes of this meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Oh, we're finally going to vote. Pips, nurses, Pips. Motion to approve the following. Pip for nurses. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We have a renewal. A resolve that the Board of Education approves the terms of the renewal and extension settlement and release agreement involving student ID 4327 and be a further resolve that the superintendent of schools is authorized to exec execute such agreement. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? A motion to accept the following gifts and grants with don't, uh, gratitude. District office, $500 from the Cushion, Kushner family. Mohansic, $2,025 from the Mohansic PTA to cover cost of cultural enrichment activities. Crompond, a Bluetooth PA system valued at $400. $29.49 from the First Nighters of Yorktown. And at the high school, a Spectra Sick Light for the Yorktown High School Auditorium valued at $1,775.74 from First Nighters and $2,900 from ski team parents to offset the cost of ski lift tickets. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. All right, board comments. Christine. I'm good, thank you. Cheryl. I'm good, thanks. Tom. Um, just thanks for making it easy for us. <laughs> <laughs> Mike? Uh, no, I'm good. Great job. Uh, it's easy when there's not a lot of major changes. I also think having the finance committee, you know, that, that little committee that you guys uh, sit on, <laughs> um, is also very helpful. So thank you. Um, and again, thank you. Thank you, all of the administrators. 
and all the staff members. We appreciate you coming out. We appreciate your help with the budget. Go home. Go home. Yeah, go, go, go. We're up to public comment. Anybody want to speak? All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Aye.